Is the keepers of reddit. How are the animals acting differently now that there are no visitors to the zoo? As is a keeper coordinator I've been working at the now closed zoo almost every day for the past month. Animals that are free roaming, peacocks, iguanas, are more active and follow keepers around like they usually do with visitors. Most of the others don't show much change in behavior. Although birds like swans and flamingos are using the edges of their habitats more. Most of our animals are happy, as long as we can keep their routines, feeding times etc. For some they need a little extra. We do public encounters with our koalas, wombats, and snakes among others. So we spend an hour or so a day cuddling and handling these animals to keep them happy. A few of our koalas really fret if they don't get their cuddles. Otherwise we just try to continue to spend time with animals that are expecting human interaction and of course we can take things for walks around the place. Like I'm sure you've seen at other zoos. Our wombats love a run and sniff. Dingoes as well. Actually, you can check the live cam video feed and see for yourselves. Just google San Diego Zoo live cams. In our local zoo the apes started to miss the visitors. So they brought in an artist in who's now just painting in the empty monkey house so the apes have someone to watch. The zookeepers could tell they missed the visitors because they became very bored and are much more excited about the keepers than usual. Apparently they watch the visitors as much as the other way around. The keepers now have to pay them more attention to, and they also do stuff like hide food for them as a game. Imagine being an aspiring artist who finally gets a job offer after years of practice, and when you get there they tell you to paint for monkeys. Due to temporary staff cuts, they no longer have the people to regularly walk the wombats. Some of the wombats are holding the keepers personally responsible. Imagine having a 20 kilogram chunk of muscle with big rodent teeth mad at you. I'm just trying to see the penguins walk around the zoo in person man. That's all I want. You can meet the penguins at the zoo where I used to work. It's just outside Chicago, if you happen to find yourself there after this quarantine. They get to choose whether or not to interact with you of course, but they will generally choose to because you have fish, which is their favorite quality in a person. It's at Brookfield Zoo. I work on an activity farm. There is a 22 year old shy horse. He acts like a prick when there are customers around. With no customers, he's actually still a prick. That being said, he's still awesome. I've been asked what he does when there are customers. Basically, if he sees any customer feeding any other animal in the large barn, where he hangs out in the day, he will stare at them and stomp his front hoof on the ground. That guarantees they look at him. If they don't immediately come over to feed him, he will start kicking the heavy metal bars that divide his area and the pen next door. This makes one hell of a noise. And he will keep it up, all whilst staring at the person with the food. If they feed him then he rewards them, by slobbering all over their hands as he takes the food. Also, at the end of the day he is really good at telling the time. He knows when we close, and what time he should be released from the barn, and taken to the field slash stables, where he spends the night. If he isn't let out bang on time he starts kicking the shit out of the gate at the back of his pen. This is a big metal gate, and it sounds like someone playing a giant glockenspiel with a sledgehammer. He will keep this up, until it is opened. Some customers are just scared to hand feed him. He is massive and his mouth is big enough to easily fit someone's hand in. Some customers come up to me with their bag of food, and ask me if I will feed him because he keeps staring at me, but I'm a bit too nervous to feed him. I happily oblige. I love that ornery old bastard. The walruses are masturbating furiously. This reminded me to put tape over my webcam. My wife works at the gift shop for our zoo and the other day we had to go move some stuff around in the store, because due to some heavy rains, it had flooded a bit. Of course we took a lap around the empty park, other than the keepers and few maintenance workers, and found that all the animals were really active and playful. A lot of them seemed really curious about us too. I'm sure they get used to seeing crowds every day, and were starving for attention. For a lot of our animals, having the ability to interact with guests is actually extremely important. Even for primates to be able to play with kids through the glass, they are missing out on a lot of enrichment. Guests keep a lot of the monkeys entertained. I watch our guests all day long show our marmosettes and capuchin selfie cameras and they love to see their reflection. Guests will also show videos on their phones to animals and the monkeys totally enjoy it. 
We have a rescue cockatoo named Ro who sings row 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 your boat to guests. When little kids dance and sing it to her, she gets really excited and feeds off their energy. So do our other cockatoos on exhibit. But now without guests to show off for, every now and then, when it's quiet we'll hear her start row row row, and then she stop and huffs a bit and gets really quiet and sad because she has no one to sing to. Some of our animals really miss having kids to show off for. You also have to remember that animals in zoos for the most part have grown up totally accustomed to being around people 24 over 7. They are not wild animals at all really. They've grown up in a very different social dynamic. Quite a few animals get noticeably depressed in the winter months every year when we have few guests and then perk up in the spring when we get busy. My girlfriend is a zookeeper and animal behaviorist. She says their animals are becoming stressed. One of their African grey bads has been plucking his own feathers. She also mentioned that, because they can't touch many of the animals due to the virus potentially spreading to another zookeeper, many of the animals are looking and acting depressive, not eating well, etc. The two pygmy hippos, six bison, giant anteater, and lowland taper I took care of, I'm temporarily laid off, didn't have any change in behavior. Solcatus are still assholes. Can confirm. Solcatus are assholes. Worked with to that would ram into my shins repeatedly, they left nasty bruises. And if you released them for some outside their enclosure time, they would take off for the most remote part of the property. And then when you tried to herd them back, or bribe them back they would lower their center of gravity and glare. An 80 pound tortoise, when it does not want to move is not fun. I'm an aquarium keeper, and I've certainly noticed a change. Fish are not as stressed as they used to be, as there are no longer children stomping around and banging on glass screaming Nemo, Nemo, it's Nemo at every clone fish. We brought some of our younger penguins down to let them watch the fish, and they were intrigued but confused as to why they couldn't catch them through the glass. Our octopus has become much more friendly as well, and instead of hiding all day from people, enjoys playing with small baby toys or solving food puzzles. It's been nice. I wish there were guidelines people had to sign to behave at zoos before entering, but at the same time, they are the lifeline we so desperately need to keep functioning. Now more than ever, zoos and zoo animals need your help. I understand that it is a time of financial disparity for a lot of people, myself included. But we as humans will be fine and overcome this. Those who cannot are the species we help to conserve it as are accredited facilities. Without people having interest in wildlife, zoos themselves could now face extinction. If you have a local zoo, or a zoo you just adore please, donate. Something as small as a pizza for the keepers of your favorite animals, or a donation the price of general admittance, all the way up to buying a membership, or making a significant donation, goes so far to help us stay employed and caring for all our individuals. We are doing our best during this crisis to bring you the best experience we can, so you can social distance too. If you like what you see and have the ability, you can be sure that your donation is appreciated by every single keeper working through this time. The pandas could finally get it on. 10 years they have been waiting for people to leave them alone. Imagine waiting for privacy for 10 years, finally get some, only to have pictures of you getting it on plastered all over the internet. I'm late to the thread, so I'm sure this will get buried, but I work for a very large, very busy as a zoo. I work with the ambassador animals, so they are animals that are very used to the public. Pretty much like what everyone else has said, the animals are mostly confused that there aren't any people. Our petting zoo animals in particular are super needy. The second they see or hear us, they all come running over and start crying for attention. We are trying to give all the animals as much attention as possible, but we are down to a bare bones crew, so it's not as much as we would like. What I wanted to add, though, because I think it's incredibly interesting, is that we are collecting fecal samples from some of the animals to be tested for cortisol levels, which is a pretty good indicator of stress levels. That way, when guests come back, we can take samples for comparison, to see how much guests impact stress. 
I think it's really cool that we are taking this opportunity to see what we can learn about how guests impact the animals and to see if there are potentially things we can do even better to improve the lives of the animals in our care. We were really hoping to do some behavioral studies too about things like activity levels, amount of the enclosure being utilized, etc. That are also important considerations for their welfare, but unfortunately we just don't have the time or staffing. Not as a keeper here, but there was a story on the local news that the apes at the local zoo are apparently very bored because they don't have any people doing stupid things to watch anymore. Horse trainer slash barn manager here. My farm has 46 horses, about half are privately owned and boarded with us. Like most farms across the country we are completely shut down to all but essential staff. The horses are mostly pretty happy to eat, hang out, and do horse things. We keep our horses turned out 24 over 7, which helps them remain healthy, happy, moving, and socializing. They are starting to lose muscling at this point, with being worked slash ridden. Months or years of conditioning just disappearing by the day. But it will come back once they are all in work again. But I can tell that they are missing human interaction. My personal riding horse was giving me the cold shoulder yesterday, probably because of the lack of attention. I have been trying to give the boarded horses extra attention. I'm sure their owners are missing them terribly right now. They all seem to lean in a little more when I brush them these days. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to Reddit for more stories.